Welcome to the Lipstick Pickup Podcast with Emily Walters and Robert Mache. I'm a music lover in Nashville, and he's a Memphis-based guitarist. We set up a party line where we discuss our mutual obsession with the lore and sound of lipstick pickups and the music they inspired. I think I'll give Robert a call now, and we hope you'll pick up and listen in. Ring, ring. Hello. Patrick Sweeney. Hello, Evelyn. The unmistakable voice of Patrick Sweeney. Thank you. I'm, uh, how you doing, Pat? This is Emily. Doing great. Glad to be a part of the <laughs> lipstick pickup empire, you know, single coil pickups for the masses. <laughs> You're my kind of life soldier, Sweeney. I'm calling my friend we, uh, with this remote technology we call Riverside all the way to the east side of the river. <laughs> That's right. Because it was just an easier way to do it. I just um, don't cross it. We here hard. on the east side, we just don't go over there, Emily. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. It's, it's getting it's increasingly done. hard to, it's not, to cross, it's just that, not done. cross that river. We know something about it. With this this um, this format we're using is called Riverside, and uh, we're we're using it so I can have a conference call with Patrick Sweeney today. He's on the east side. I'm over on the whatever side <laughs> um but i'm calling him today because i uh this is emily with the lipstick pickup and uh i have sympathetic strings that i like to talk to about this uh subject of mine which is cardboard guitars and um lipstick pickups and tone and i conscripted is my new favorite word uh, Patrick Sweeney is one of my sympathetic strings. I really didn't give you, you did. I really didn't give you much choice, did I? Not a lot. No, it was pretty much this is how was, things go, uh, you know. And I'm I'm cool with that. It was like any draft. You know, I mean, what's not to lie? I mean, there was obviously there was bribery involved. I get to borrow this thing, which is insane. Let's give the viewers what they want. You know all that. For those for those not watching the uh, video, oh. Patrick is holding up my baby, uh, my my not full not baby but full size Jerry Jones electric sitar, which is a re a high quality reproduction of the original Dan Electro Coral, and I bought this instrument a year ago as an investment. And um, I said, I want to lend it out to some people. Uh, and I have had some, and I've lent it out to some people. And then some people are like, I'm going to lend you this instrument no matter what you say. <laughs> and Patrick Sweeney agreed to it. I think it was a month ago I ambushed you. Yeah. Give or it take was, a week or two. It was, uh, we were at the East Side Bowl. That was a star studded night. Oh, that was fun. Oh, at the, the Muscle Shoals. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was fun. That it was, was fun. that a con If that was a competition, Sweeney won. <laughs> it's not a competition. It's not a competition, people, but Sweeney like won. There, I right? was but, there. You know. That was great. That's, I've never been to a gig where more Clarence Carter was performed. It was it was amazing. Like at like three different guys did Clarence Carter, and I did two Clarence Carter tunes. Like you were made yeah. for that variety show, which is He's, why I said I'll be there. And I, I I told you I said I know you gotta lug some things around. I hope you're not traveling. I hope you're traveling light because no, I just sing on that gig. <laughs> Strut in late, order a drink. I'm on. <laughs> It was awesome, man. Love that. You nailed it. That was stuff, that was man. fun. That's, that's great. Well, that was when I when I get I'm I'm totally off topic. I want to introduce the listener to my old friend Patrick Sweeney. I've known him for twelve or thirteen years. Mm -hmm. I met him through mutual acquaintances. He came over to the house uh, to do a podcast with my husband Kevin when he was doing a little dabbling in this early 
thing and uh, for the Tennessean. Mm-hmm. And, and but I'd never heard of him until I moved here, and I became an instant fan. I met him, and then I became a fan of his music instead of the other way around. I usually stalk my way into people's lives. Nice. I like. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good way to do it, you know. But just Nashville is such a weird dynamic because everyone's but, doing something. Oh man. You know. So like. I, I I became an instant fan. Well, thank you. I have strong, their unprofessional, amateur journeyman's opinions on the genre of music. If he can be put in a genre of music, Patrick Sweeney uh, dabbles in more than dabbles in, is a pioneer in in, in many ways, and I think he's one of he's uh, he's best in genre. Well, thank you. I mean, that's, the, the, that's one of the best things. I don't things know how to, re- to respond to that. <laughs> I, well, because I've, I, uh, I have great taste, and I love Patrick wow. Sweeney's music. We're going to get into that. But I wanted to um, introduce you as my favorite singer in Nashville. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I, you who, know, who happens to also play guitar. Right. Well, that's... You know, that's the thing of in, in Nashville, like moving here, you know, because I'm I mean, I'm I'm known as a guitar player, you know, in sort of my, you know, in my little corner of the world, you know, that in my in my music career. But it's the guitar has always been accompaniment to singing. And, uh, you know, I always admired, you know, the, the singers more because that's, you know, I just didn't have access to you know to learn you know a bunch of lead guitar and stuff like that but my dad had blues records and things and and and, uh so you know i had a i had a friend show Mm -hmm. me stairway to heaven but i couldn't figure out how he did the the solo you know the jimmy page solo or or had you know something that could approximate it you know but uh and i was also sort of living this sort of secret folk and blues life but i love those singers so much and I wasn't, you know, that was also at the time, like really finding that stuff at the time of sort of the hair metal, the, you know, sort of really coming over and these, you know, just, I don't know. I think there's a really like that sort of mock operatic singing that just really turned me off. Whereas, you know, like in like singing, you know, really high and almost falsetto or something like that, but, you know, kind of nasally because I'd heard already heard at that point, heard BB King and Ray Charles sing. And like, that's where, you know, the voice is like, that's where it moves people, you know, and that, cause it just didn't, that stuff just didn't move me. I, you know, there were some cool guitars and stuff, but the singing always turned me off. So it just sort of drove me down my nerd hole. I could, I, I guess I went a little long on that. So no, no, <laughs> next I, I, I want to talk. No, I want to talk. Mo- no, we're going to talk more <laughs> about your singing. Okay. Okay. I know you men, you just want to go straight to guitar. I want to talk more about your singing (laughs) because it's one thing to be a guitar player. It's go hand in hand, singer, songer, you know, you're a vocalist, but you are a singer that could be just a singer. You know, it was, it took a long time. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to say it, but I I think it's true. I think you're, you're one of my favorite singers. Well, thank you. I, Uh, you know, um, learning, learning to be a front person. And, uh, and then realizing that you have to entertain, you know, and I've always wanted to be an entertainer. That's, you know, I always wanted to play in front of people and I wanted attention and I wanted those people to, you know, to like me and and enjoy it, you know, and I always loved entertainers, you know, and that, you know, so, and those guys always seem like they were relaxed and in control and, uh, you know, which is, you know, I'm just a super high strung guy, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm never, you know. So you get to put like getting to put on that thing of being like, ah, I'm relaxed in control when you're, you know, you're, you know, mostly just angry and terrified, uh, you know, most of your life. So, I, you, you know, ever, and, did uh, you, you know, ever play the insecure, drums? So, you know, you pick up one of these guys and that turned your bad feelings into good stuff. Oh, uh, did, uh, did you ever drum? Did, I got to interrupt and ask you, did you ever no, drum? Okay, never, so ever. Instead of being a drummer, you're like, I'm going to be a singer no, and a guitar that would player. never would have went down <laughs> at the at the Sweeney house. Over oh, wow. Canyon, Canyon Avenue. Uh, that would uh, like when I got an electric guitar or wanted to play electric guitar, uh, my dad had one at a um, Japanese thing in this 
really cool Newcomb record player that he just put a uh, – was a two record player that the school he taught at was uh, was going to throw out, and uh, he put a quarter inch jack in it, and it's a guitar amplifier, you know, instead of their mic, you know, whatever antiquated, you know, mic input. He put the quarter inch jack on it, soldered that on, and this amazing sounding guitar amp. So, my first guitar amp, that you know, really the first time I plugged an electric guitar, it had really, really, really great tone. Because it's got a low output, you know, Japanese guitar with a really cool, you know, like tone pickup or something in it. And hearing that, and I could get it like, you know, I didn't know how to do much. But I was like, man, when I hit like a BB King or like half a BB King lick, like it sounds like that. What year would that have been? That would have been your in young the life. Middle 80s, 86, 87, okay. maybe as, yeah, maybe as late as 88. Uh, yeah, awesome. probably, probably 87, I would think. But when I, when I wanted to play some electric guitar and then I bought an electric guitar, saved up money, uh, and, and, and bought one, um, that was, uh, my dad ran an extension cord from the garage to the camper, which was on, you know, solid 30 feet from the house. Like, you know, in this little Shasta camper that we, that we had. And uh, he said, you can play acoustic in the house, but that's it. You know, Boundaries. No. Boundaries. I, I like your father. Out there, and man, I was like, what? You know, I was pissed. You know, I'm like, oh, there. So, and it's, you know, it's winter. It's freezing out there and had a... You know, little old, you know, God, I don't know, even, you know, house burner, little, you know, you know, those curved metal space heaters that puts out about, you know, about that much heat, you know, and I had that You're thing in there. You're lucky you didn't and, die of, uh, die in a, in a trailer fire. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, this, this will work, you know, and, uh, you know, well, and then it was also, you, well, sh- you know, I also, that was also, hey, man, this is getting to be, you know. As we've normalized that I'm just going to go outside where you can't hear me in my own space. That was not a great parenting idea. You know, I, well, it kind of learned- became <laughs> the depot of, you know, illicit activities by, you know, oh, young boy. Pat Sweeney as he is, as he tuned in. Turned did, on and dropped out. Did your friends uh, <laughs> come over and see you hang out? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I believe the term is dope shed. Uh. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, my word. Well, that is right in keeping with me still trying to introduce you yeah. as my friend um, who is going to teach me about something about tone. Every one of these sympathetic strings has been... My friend, the bass player, you're going to give me bass lessons. And today, Patrick Sweeney is going to give me lessons about tone. And the, this is a word that I, that I see guitar players talk about all the time. You know, tone. You guys Absolutely. are always congratulating each other on your tone. And I think to myself, you know, I don't play an instrument, but I do have a pretty keen ear for the stuff, meaning I have dedicated a lot of my life to enjoying music um, and being a very engaged and coherent music listener. I'm not an amateur. I mean, I don't play music, but I'm not an amateur. You know it. I'm serious. You're, you know. (laughs) I'm serious. So, but from my perspective, I think tone is a lot of things. And I want people to know that I like the tone of Patrick Sweeney. He can not only sing his ass off, he can play his ass off. And he also knows how to dance. I'm not that good of a dancer. (laughs) It's not, it's untrue people. It's untrue. It's untrue. Well, you know how to dance. I've seen you do it. Okay. You, you're a showman. You said when you were young, you wanted to be a showman. You, well, you uh, you have achieved it, Patrick Sweeney. I've well, seen you, you in every capacity with your band, with the Tiger Beats, with Super Felon. Every time uh, in Nashville where everybody loves to do a tribute show and some are better than others. If I see one and I'm, I'll be like, Patrick Sweeney's involved, I'll probably check that one out. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I it's know. It's true. Do, do you like my tone? 
I do. I do love the Tony voice. Uh, but, you know, that that thing is always just, you know, it's it's a lot like, you know, I just sort of like used it just like guitar playing. Like, wow, this guy really does this thing. But, you know, the guy that's singing, everyone's always looking at that guy, you know. So and you see, you know, pictures of yourself and you're like, why, why is your why are you holding your arm like that? Do you do that all the time? Like, you know, like, dude, you're, you know, like, what are you doing with your leg? You know, <laughs> what is that? Why are you, why is one leg doing that? But wow, the other one is, seems like a normal human leg. That's you know, hilarious. that kind of thing. Well, you see, so you sort of kind of be aware of, it's like almost like the embouchure of a saxophone player or, you know, that, you know, the way you hold the, you know, the approach the guitar, you've got to sort of address that, you know, with the way you address the microphone and the yeah, way, style. You know, like style. that, of that thing. Yeah. So you seem relaxed and in control mm -hmm. and, you know, and then if you don't have an instrument in your hand, you're only the singer, you ain't doing a whole hell of a lot. Like, you know, you're just the loudest Unless you're one. Mick Jagger. Well, right. But you know, <laughs> even that, a perfect example is Mick does the most that yeah. any front person can do. He does the most that any front person can do. And, you know, his, for has a white anyone man. said, for a my white God, man. what a for range. For a white man. Yeah. I mean, like, for a rock and roll, I mean, you know, the be you know the greatest rock and roll band of all time. You know, I mean, yeah. hard, you know, you know if saying, you could, you if know, you could even Brown have that is... discussion, you can't have it without the Rolling Stones. Yeah. So, but James what Brown, he does. Okay, James Brown is an example. James of... Brown, I mean, James yeah. Brown was not, I don't know if James Brown was human. Like, uh, just like James he Brown. supernatural, Also, man. very limited vocalist, though. I mean, extremely, like, but, I mean, he'd had his thing that was unlike that no one else could do either. Like, no one could do what James was doing. He was also doing mm -hmm. it while dancing the whole time. And, you know, just, he changed. James Brown changed so much. And he always had great guitar tone on his records. Like, all his guitar players are always, you know, from the Collins Catfish Collins, all those guys, uh, through Jimmy, you know, Nolan on the very, you know, the very early stuff. Um, I forget the other, uh, all pro, all uh, pro, perfect, all pro, perfect. You had tone. to be these guys, perfect you tone. know, one reason why I love Patrick Sweeney is that he's the real deal folks. He knows how to get on the road. <laughs> Yeah, you know. He's a red I've, dog. A very I'm simple, yeah, I have a very simple, small business that has not seen a ton of growth. So you get real used to the operational methods, you know. You you know, you get in the van and you do the thing. And it's always, I've it's seen weirder it. now than it's ever been. Like, But it used to be, you could, if you were just able to get out and get in the van and play shows, you could make a living. Yeah. In music, and it's you know, it's different now. I don't know how young bands do it, but that's how I got my start and going yeah. out and just sort of blowing, you know, playing some. But bar you know and... something about the road and then being a pro. And I told you, you're the in this first round of sympathetic strings. You're the only person in Nashville that I've talked to or dealt with um, because I just wanted to prove to people that I'm not. Yeah, I got them all over. I'm on every street corner, but you know that's why I wanted to talk to other people. My usual cohort, Robert, is in Memphis, and I talked to friends all over the country. And I wanted to bring somebody from Nashville into the mix. And I was like, I wanted you to um, be my sympathetic string because you're all pro, man. Well, th I know. Well, it's, thanks. I mean, you know, I've, I've watched you operate. I know I, I've seen shows of yours where you're with your buddies and you're doing things for fun. But I have I wanted to talk about I reminded you that I saw you at a club called remind me the name in San Diego. Um, oh, the Soda Bar. Soda Bar. Well, great. Kevin great and, and I were clubs of our nation. Yeah, San Diego, I've never Soda been bar. there. I, I'm not even a person who oh, routinely goes so to San Diego, but. At the time, we had some friends living there, and they were always, come visit us, and we love to come visit them, cheap flight out there, and I saw that you were playing one of the days that we were going to be out there, and so I brought a group of people, which were me and Kev, our friends that we were staying with, an incredibly fabulous gay couple named Rand and Steve. And then I had one of my oldest friends that I went to high school with, um, uh, Jomo Raymond and his wife. 
Jo- uh, Jomo and I went to the Jackson Dang. Public Schools together, and his father was a freedom rider. Oh, right on. And um, not to get, but to tell you, I'm a real deal. His uh, the car in the bur- uh, the three lives from Mississippi in the movie Mississippi Burning, where they buried mm-hmm. him in a a, um, a station wagon. The three civil rights workers. Yeah, that was Jomo's father's station wagon. Oh wow! He wasn't in the car that night. He had lent them Whoa. his car. And that's wow. Jomo that you met him. Do you remember meeting him? Wow, yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, that's that my night, friend, yeah. Jomo Raymond. And he, he has a fabulous home in San Diego and a yacht at the harbor. Go so I would like people to know that he, came, he went to my uh, crappy public school, too. Um, and he's living the life, a dream life out there. But I brought him all to your show and... The, the place was packed. The show was sold out, and it was full of people who love Patrick Sweeney, and I I love Patrick Sweeney too. And all my oh. friends who never heard of you loved you too. Well, thank you. You well, nailed was, it. Okay, yeah. um, but I want you. You just picked up that that telly. I want. Do you want to show me something on that about tone? Yes. Well, I mean, do we it. were talking about tone, and yeah. uh, my good friend uh, Wade Kofer, who I think is uh, one of the best uh, luthiers period you know and he uh he built this guitar which is uh, uh which is you know you like you like masonite guitars a very thin i've been wondering about that now that i know yeah, the construction so it's a, the, it's the a, banding it's a it's a it's a hollow you know this is just he just you can just buy rolls of this stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> on amazon you know this and it's the same stuff that they put on the old dan electros things like that but uh this and it holds uh, originally had a big too, speed i've noticed uh, on it but it's uh the the back and and uh the front and back are, are masonite uh you know with the neck bolted you know until he neck bolted onto it that he uh that he painted but this is you know it's such a cheap material he would got these pieces of masonite from working at a brewery and the kegs would come on these pallets and then the masonite i guess sat in between them or some whatever you know packing each other like Wow. Hey, do you mind, you know, he's carrying stuff out to the dumpster. He's like, hey, Matt, you mind if I grab a couple sheets of it? And they're like, yeah, yeah, take all you want. Like whatever. So he's made, you know, uh, several of these. Um, but I just love it because it's one, it's, it's, uh, I really like hollow body guitars. To me. This is a revelation What's... to me because it's not only until recently Reminder to you and our listeners, I've never played instrument. I mean, I know, knew a little something about guitars, but now that I know a lot about the, what I call the Danosphere, and they're mostly right. Masonite guitars, I'm starting to recognize hollow. the look. Yes, hollow, exactly. Hollow as well. Very important part of the tone. One, one thing that people like, pros, they are light. Oh, this also thing weighs. pros. Do you, the whole do, thing weighs less than like, it's like six, six and a half pounds. Okay, and I'm also about deducing. Every, yeah, I've, I've weighed. Yeah, it's, I've it's weighed very the light ones. for a guitar. Maybe, maybe less, maybe five. I, you know, uh, but it's it's light, which is a good thing for oh, especially yeah. people in your line of work. You know, <laughs> like it's hard. It's, it's they're hard on you. I mean, guitars are hard on you. Heavy ones oh, are absolutely. hard on you. But here's another thing. Do you know who Jeff Sen is, the guitar yes, luthier I here? I really admire his work quite yeah, a bit. He, yeah, he, I I don't know him. I believe I've met him before, but we have, mm-hmm. you know, he's part of my c- consultation on social media. You know, he comments oh, well, on that's things. Great. And he I mean, told me, um, incredibly knowledgeable. He he cheers me on. Yeah, he cheer, he cheers me on. He follows the story. He told, I told him, I said, these, I, I bet these things, he, he posted a picture of one of his creations or something, and it was Masonite, and I said, I bet that thing will float. And he said, I bet it will. It's lightweight. And I don't know if you know this, but my father worked for Masonite. And, um, oh, I didn't know that. I'm just now coming to figure <laughs> this all out. I knew he worked for him a long time ago, but now I did. Now that the Dan Electro is intersecting with my father's uh, war, uh, post career he was a, a a forester and he went to work for masonite in the 40s and what i'm coming to realize is that he taught them how to pine who to build pine plantations which is what is in that guitar masonite is a composite of wood chips and resin and the reason why it'll float and it's lightweight is it's strong and 
uh, flexible for its weight, and it's also more resistant. Once you, once water gets into it, you're in trouble. But right. from surface water, it, it and Jeff, uh, I said, Jeff, I'm thinking that these things, one reason why there's so many old ones out there on the market is that you can find one of these that had been up in an attic, an old Ampen case had been in somebody's attic for 40 mm-hmm. years and it comes out and it's in perfectly fine shape, is that it was made a Masonite. If it had been a, a, like a Gibson or something, it wouldn't right. have survived. And he told me that he had a bunch of, he lost some guitars in the flood and the ones that were Masonite were fine. <laughs> I believe it. True story. I- but I want to talk more about why you chose well, this guitar, why you chose this material. Because, because I started the watching tone. the banding, and I was like, I think Patrick's is made out of Masonite. And I watched you play last weekend. I, I was looking at it up close, and I was like, that guitar looks like it's made of Masonite by that banding. So tell me why you made that choice. I'm dying to know. Well, I always, you know, the because Masonite was a cheap material that they can make guitars out of, you know, and that certain the Dan Electro area, you know, you tended to see a lot of those with like, I'd see them in pictures of blues guys that I liked. So in the 2000, uh, maybe late nineties, that was when Dan, uh, Dan Electro sort of did the, you know, was purchased by somebody and reissued some of those. Uh, mm-hmm. or I immediately bought one and it was my main slide guitar. And I really liked the sound of those pickups. Is that the one that's in the picture of where yes. you're sitting there with Dan Auerbach at a club yes. in Kent, Ohio? Yes. Yeah. Kent, Ohio. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. And that would have been, that would have been like 2000, I would guess mm-hmm. maybe 2001. Mm-hmm. But, uh, because they're such a lightweight thing, you know, they're really, really fun to play. So, you know, they've got, and they're mm-hmm. really resonant, you know, like I'll, I'll turn this, you know, But they sustain for a long time, too, despite being hollow, which is different than, you know, like I have hollow. I meant to, to set out a few more guitars uh, behind me. But, you know, the, the, you know, the hollowness yeah. of the, the vibration of the of the instrument and having a chamber to hollow it like an acoustic guitar would uh, mm-hmm. is different than uh, and like a solid body electric guitar. They have di- you mm-hmm. know, different properties, different, you know, uh, they, they resonate in a different way. This sort of gives it more acoustic properties which gives a little uh a little more roundness to the lo- to the low end yeah. of the guitar when i'm playing like like say if i was just going to play like just some backup you know guitar like there's this like i have i I've, i could show the settings on my amplifier you know the bass is turned very very low I'm at a low volume here in this room, just, um, uh, but it provides so much more of that, that low end because of, without sacrificing any sort of the, uh, Mm -hmm. that sustain, it's sort of the perfect combination of, of acoustic and solid body, uh, which I just dig so much. (laughs) And that's it's you no know, joke. Sustain people sustain. It, it really does sustain. I mean, it yeah. sustains as much as any other, uh, like I've got a, I have another, I, I like Telecasters a lot. And, uh, You're this a, is a, you uh, have a classic style. So it would make sense that you would play something with the classic just style wise. even. Yeah. Well, they're also, know? they're great tools just as, yeah. as far as that, like this is a, a parts, uh, you know, as a, a Telecaster made parts, this particular because of this mm-hmm. uh i want to try these uh, these are really really cheap these are like a paul O'Neill wood <laughs> that they're, they're it's like balsa wood this whole guitar weighs less than five pounds something like that but a very similar thing where it sustains uh, who is the manufacturer it, of this one i bought these off of ebay off of a company called alan eden guitar works uh wow. it's a fender neck and these pickups are made by uh uh, by Porter pickups. Okay. Um, uh, and these ones are made by McNally and they're more like a, a, a P90, like a vintage, uh, yeah. p- like will be a fifties P90, which would be a, a fairly low output, uh, pickup for, uh, for a P90. I'm and, learning uh, what these words mean I, because yeah, I'm taking yeah. guitar <laughs> lessons. I can, I can also back up. I realize that, you know, I, you, you know, really are. I, I told four you four nerds. Only, I told like, you that I was going to get tone lessons from okay. Patrick Sweeney, so and that amount, is exactly what I'm doing right now. I love this. So, uh, 
there's a number assigned, you know, of, of how strong the the pickup is and, you know, mm-hmm. how the, the way it absorbs single. And the modern, uh, at least like in the 80s and 90s, like, you know, 90s people wanted to drive, and even the 70s, they were doing higher output pickups and sort of lower output pickups like Stratocaster pickups are, mm-hmm. are tend to be much of then, say, like a Les Paul pickup. Mm-hmm. But the first original Les Pauls and the original, uh, you know, the first designs are fairly, really low output, very similar in tone to a Fender Telecaster pickup, which is a single coil pickup. Whereas the, you know, Les Paul developed the PAF pickup or Gibson, uh, the, 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 the patent applied for pickup, which is a very mm-hmm. low output humbucking pickup. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really bright, really clear, really has this sort of glassy tone. Mm-hmm. Um, where's your... Not dissimilar from here, but there's a roundness to it, and it's very silent. Uh, uh, the P90 pickup, sort of before the development of of the humbucking pickup, uh, was basically just a, a, a little different magnets, a little thing. I, I eventually I want to get my friend who built this this guitar, Wade Kofer. To talk of to, to get, come on your show and talk about Spell it. Spell his it last might... name for me. C O F E R. Wade. I Kofer. can't wait to I can't wait to look him up yeah, because he's... this is beautiful and I. It's a gorgeous guitar too, and it suits your style, black and white. I love yeah. So I I love this guitar. It's gorgeous, and, uh, and it's good, but it has this. Let certain... me see the headstock. I just want to see his mm-hmm. uh, you know his insignia. Let me uh, pardon me one moment. Oh, sorry. Not good. Yeah. I, for those not watching us, it's just a clean, simple. But he did put like a mother of bowling Masonite. ball finish on, which is a little hard to see on there. But oh, uh, really? It's got a little sparkle. Oh yeah. Oh cool. Sparkle motion, baby. Oh, I, it's hard to see. You know, on it the, is hard to see because the, of the lighting in, in here. But uh, yeah. But it, it makes the player look little, handsome. I love your room. That is there, what is, was in the promotional literature. Uh, okay, give me a few licks and give me a, a okay. prime example of, of that tone of that guitar, what you can do with that guitar. Right. Well, that's, like you said, like even that, I'm putting it like on the, on the, the back pickup here where it is. But it's very bright. I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing to vibrate that string, and it's really that it string is vibrating until. But it just it never loses that acoustic property that I, I just think so because I'm I'm a fingerstyle guitar player, you know the stuff I really dig. You know, like of of what I think like guitars should sound like is usually the early, uh, you know, like the early blues guys, like you know Lowell T Bone Walker, Lowell Folson, Lightning Hopkins, most of all, mm-hmm. where there's you know basically an electrified acoustic guitar is their mm-hmm. is their thing, and I think yeah. I, I just I use a, lot. a, a and primitive and, sound, a primitive yeah, well, sound. It, it is. Yeah. I guess that yeah. is. I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's a non. You know, it's a non-dismissive, you know, as like there's primitive of like this is, yeah. it's early in the process. Yeah. Um, that's uh, what we're, it's, that's why it's an archetypal brand of uh, type of music. It's primitive and it's origins and your right. modern, your modern blues. Right. And, and all, but it's got funny a modern that, blues like, guitar. Congratulations, the, Patrick Sweet. <laughs> yeah. All the guys <laughs> on, you know, on, on both sides of the tracks, black and white music figured out the first try like when electric amplifiers and guitars are used you know turn them up as loud as they'll go and and then from muddy waters to anyone else and then just sort of turn the volume knob mm-hmm. to where it now i i had to be conservative but uh that is something too that has a lot to do with retaining some of that acoustic tone yeah uh as well of like what when you back these things off and you have to dig in your your playing has to has to dig in more mm-hmm. and it gives some sort of this this coloration 
that you just don't get with other kinds of guitars. Mm -hmm. And that's really where where I live. You know, that's that's my my little you know area of of focus. I love it. Um, yeah, I didn't know this was a happy Easter egg in our discussion. This is unscripted, mm -hmm. and I just. The idea, I want to call Patrick Sweeney and talk to him about tone. And I, I had no idea all that about this one that I've seen you play a bunch. How long have you owned that guitar? I've seen you with it. Yeah. Uh, it's been a couple of years. Hey, Emily, yeah. just one moment. I'm sorry to get off camera here. It's all right. Because I've unplugged my computer and I've got a notification. My battery is low, so let me just... All right, here we go. I'll see. This is, this is live television, folks. We're live, baby. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I've Johnny seen you play Carson. it, and it wasn't. Now I'm starting to have an eye for these things like lipstick pickups. It doesn't have lipstick pickups, but that I recognize no. that banding. And now that I have my own silver tone, fourteen forty eight, I bought one as part of my investment portfolio. I'm really starting to write. And these things that that banding is a look, and now I know. The, that what what they're doing that for and just the other night um kevin and i went to go see another incarnation you were at brown's diner and you and oh Ted, with jeffrey yeah uh jeff jeffrey clemens and clemens ted and ted who i've seen play with you many times yeah. um that's one thing, you know, you're an all-encompassing guy and you're my favorite talent scout <laughs> <laughs> like whoever's playing with you is going to be fine. It doesn't matter if they're 20 yeah. years old or 60. <laughs> well, I, that's sort of my role in you the community too. You have great associations. Like of, You're a talent I'm the last, scout and I'm community leader. I'm the last leader. band gig guys usually do. Sorry. Like that. Like if you go out on tour with my band, you know, it's usually younger cats who can, you know, afford what I can pay them. And, uh, you know, and we take it, handle it. Yeah. And that's it. And that's sort of my, my, my role of, of it. And it always has been, but that's also sort of that yeah. traditional blues thing role. That's what muddy did. That's what yeah. Wolf did. That's what those guys, you know, but they had a way of, which also something I admire, they had a way of communicating their vision and, 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 and using the band to elevate that vision, you yeah. know, and, uh, and knowing that, you know, people do things for their reasons. They yeah. don't do them for your reasons. Yeah. And that and, and, and running that thing really makes a big difference. And but also it comes back to guitar tone, you know, like it's all tone. I could easily get away with being a sh just a, the loudest guy on earth and I'd be happy, but it's not something I want to do. You know. I've seen it in with my very own eyes, all your incarnations, and one of my favorite things to see for, I don't remember what year you started the Tiger Beats, but I've been a loyal fan ever since. When did you start doing the Tiger Beats? That would have been, been it's, I guess this, this version of the band is going on six years now. Okay. Now, I mean, but, I mean probably started like doing with, the with this lineup with Ted, Jason, and McKinley. No, I mean, the in the, from the very beginning. Oh, in the beginning started, with Joe yes. Matmahan and Jimmy Lester and Ron Oaf. Well, it, uh, that would, when I mean, did you start the tiger, tiger, a tiger Beats? When did you start the Tiger Beats? Probably a dozen years ago. Okay. Probably 12 so years I've ago. I've seen so maybe many incarnations. I've yeah. seen many incarnations. Yes. And it's Patrick Sweeney and his Tiger Beats. It, who, who are they tonight? Right, show right. out to find out. Well, I'm very, and, very lucky now that I have pretty stable, like the guys, the core, like core guys in 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 uh, McKinley James, Jason yeah. Smay, and Ted Pecchio. That's the core band. Uh, all you know, pro. we all sort of have our designated sub. You all know, pro. So the, the integrity of the thing is a little, because what we do is, you know, the Tiger Beats is this, you know, very, very, you know, as Ted puts it, I think the best is we color inside the lines, you know, for. The great era of blues, you know, yeah. what we call electric post-war electric blues. This is going to be from... an orderly evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not going to do anything. Like, there's no rocking. There's no shredding, you know. There's very little sitting in unless you're already a Tiger Beat. You've been strictly vetted. You indoctrinated. Know? And that's a thing. Indoctrinated. Like, in... Exactly. Well, that's, that's it. And then Mickey and I always talk about, like, is that Tiger Beats? And that's not Tiger Beats, man, you know. A I'm bunch a loyal of distortion fan. pedals. That's not Tiger Beats. Yeah. Now you I'm might see us on there. You know, we might have that. You know, the reverb pedal because the you know the reverb tank. You know, we're playing a tweed amp or something like that. But everything is just basically guitar. 
Yeah. And amp. And uh it's uh like this Dan Electro Explorer. Yeah, we're gonna talk Can about I... that in a second. Don't jump okay, yet. Cool. Don't jump. <laughs> I wanna tell people that I love his Tiger Beats and I've been a loyal fan. Yeah. Thank you. Right? You have been I've, a loyal fan. I have been and a loyal it's, fan. It's, it's, and it's I've, nothing else. I'd except... love to. Sometimes I'll just go by myself to just sit there and take a sound bath. Well, that's what we want. That's what we want people to be. I've we brought friends. I tell for... people to go there, and it just makes me happy. It's a great way to spend money uh, Monday, and I've done many great of them. And that is why um, you're my favorite talent scout. You're my favorite oh, singer. Well, you're my favorite talent scout. You're a good it's ringleader. It's too much. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more <laughs> you. because you, it's you're much. you're it's it's show business. And there's one more thing I want to talk to, talk to you about <laughs> before we jump to the gear. Uh, I know you just okay. I got to talk about this. Let's do gear. it. Listen. Okay, I want we I want to talk about Bobby Womack. <sighs> One of the true because often during this Tiger Beats thing, you'll do some. You guys will do some Bobby Womack stuff. Right? Well, no, no. With Tiger Beats like Super Felon is more sort of a thing, like you know, like that. Okay. See, uh, the, the 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 project I have with there's see Tiger Beats is nothing but you know a a certain era of you know say like cuts off at like 1968 from like okay okay all right 49 to 68 is okay, like sort uh, of there and that kind of soul thing and like. Now, Bobby Womack, you know, like really started in the early 60s. I mean, he, he was, you know, with yeah. his uh, with the Womack brothers and, yeah. and out of Cleveland. Well, but that's when the they thing. Went... He, his, his career was so long, and he had many yeah. incarn, uh, incarnations. But I know that you're a reverent fan, and we were ch- oh, having, yeah. having a pregame side chat. Is Bobby Womack a nobody? No. No. Is Bobby Womack under record? People say he's under pre- uh, the worst thing I, that sometimes people say was underrated. No, it's not underrated. It's underappreciated. Uh, unless you know everything this guy had stuff to do with, he is a person who does this, who does that. He sucked. He uh, did wrote songs, guitar player, session guy, side I mean, guy. Uh, uh, I mean, and was, one of the his greatest singers. He was, he's and one he of the greatest style, singers. Too. The recitation, the rap, like, like nobody was doing, I mean, like, Decades. Joe Tex had a thing, like, there, but, like, Bobby Womack, like, Bobby Womack kind of refined that thing of just, and, and, and then, he di- did all and that, and thing that was common. his ass off. And then, yeah, and just, but totally, but even that, just his rhythm guitar playing, where he does those sort of, like... Like that kind of stuff of just locking in the band, framing the vocal. Like if it was, if he had just done that, he you know he should be the celebrated you know musician figure that that we that we you know the the nerds know about. He could but, have gotten uh, you know, by I mean, he's, just he, by he started singing. his career, <laughs> his real career was you know playing in Sam Cooke's band another, with Cliff White on another, the other guitar. Ki- another innovator community leader and talent scout as the tradition goes sam cook um yeah uh, bobby womack played guitar in his band mm-hmm. and yeah is that isn't that right and then that is correct yeah is that why but bobby all- got out of ohio yes he left okay. ohio went to la i mean he had just it either just come to la but like you know was working with sam and yeah. uh also, you know, just like a lot of guys from Ohio, when they get a little money and they start making bad decisions, and you know, that's why and Mississippi and, and, uh, and uh, Mississippi and Ohio, you know, Mississippi uh, and Ohio, over and over and over again from some from people you know from Northeast Ohio, uh, <laughs> like, Mississippi and Ohio, they man, have so, a lot in common: fertile soil. <laughs> you know, months after you know, it's not long after. Sam's dead, you know, that they're seeing, you know, Bobby Womack in his car wearing his clothes, you know, and dating his wife, you know, like kind of thing. So there's definitely some, you know, it's complicated. 17, 18. He's like, <laughs> you know, this is all good. It's complicated. You know, like, he but was he, just, he, you know, he was Bobby the, Womack. <laughs> he was just Bobby Womack. But he's a fine singer. I guess the reason why I'm 
you know, I, I, I want this show to talk to people, sympathetic strings, but I always want to take an opportunity to talk about somebody that I think is under-recognized. I think mm -hmm. Dan Electro instruments are under-recognized and Vinnie Bell is under-recognized. None of these people are nobodies. There's guitars with their name on it, but I want to talk, exalt these people. And I knew that one person that we could agree on was Bobby Womack. I know that you're a fan, but also your vocals remind me a lot of the complexity of what he can do. And I listened to him to remind myself of his range. And I listened to him um, do uh, California Dreamin' and um, uh, San Francisco. And he could do that thing too. Like, no, like you had to grow up in the grit in Ohio to sing those songs with such loving... Um, I would is reverence a, a, like a, a thing. A, I don't know if it's like ambition, there, but it's the, ambition, yeah. ambition. Uh, I'm sure guys, people get went out to guys that came from where he came from, made it all the way out to California. I bet they were, they did think that they were hot stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you came from where he came from, my friend. I, you know, but also you know, from a very talented family too. You know, that's the thing is like everyone in there. Bobby was definitely the kind of the shining star, um, uh, but you know he had all his brothers were singers. All the you know some you know yeah. some uh, you know some wrote songs. Some you know had also thing. But Bobby was you know Bobby was a star. Yeah. But also knew that you know to be involved like his involvement in all the Muscle Shoals. You know when that when that scene was hot, he was there. You know he was always where it was happening. Yeah. You know which is a you know it's a sign of genius. You know it's in in. In our Did you industry. ever meet him? No. I mean, no. you could he have would, had an opportunity to meet him many no, times. I mean, you know, he was, you know, he was kind of, you know, a pretty big star, like, yeah. you know, as far as like now. I mean, especially, you know, but also just not a guy who was out and about. And he definitely wasn't hanging out in Cleveland. You know, he was, he was, yeah. he was, he never left, I never left California after he went, you know. Yeah. So. Well, I'm going to um, wrap up that portion and say okay. that we've, I, I, I've been, um, I mean, as far as comparing you to Bobby Womack, and I want to tell you briefly why, and then we're going to talk about the gear, because I know you can't wait to talk about the gear. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the but, gear. But I mean, I ta just talking about Bobby singing. Like that is something we're getting there. So oh, I listened, I couldn't, <laughs> you've made a bunch of records. You made a bunch of records and I love most of them. We're going to talk about you, Patrick Sweeney. We're more about you and singing. And I... You know, and I thought I can only, you know, it's a bunch of records and you started acoustic. I didn't really realize that until recently when I went to go prepare myself for our chat. I didn't realize you started with acoustic. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you've had a long career, m m many records. And I went to go listen to Ancient Noise to because it's recent and I wanted to, you know, sort of immerse in it and then talk to you about it. And I, th I listened to it and I said, this is a guy with full range, just like Bobby Womack. He can sing his ass off. He can do these sophisticated uh, songs that ballads, um, and then these really primal uh, manifesto songs like uh, "Up and Down." <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna get into. I like, it. The, I like I like the manifesto angle. I love it. Well, I'm keeping but, that. But you, you see, what, it's a very complex record. So the it, real I said, Mussolini from the balcony vibe going, you know, on the next well, record. It's it's a dynamic record, just like a Bobby Womack record would be. He could do all kinds of things, and that's when I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna connect the dots here between Patrick Sweetie and Bobby Womack and say that ancient noise shows your full range and it sounds beautiful. Um I I would implore anybody listening to this, uh go look up the, anything you can on the making of the record it, it's uh, patrick just told me but we're running out of time to talk oh, to no gear worries. but th this record sounds incredible i've got three songs that i want to tell you that i'm especially fond of um not in no particular order because you know i hate ranking these people in nashville they all want to rank I, the, they want to rank the shit out of everything i don't rank anything everything no <laughs> okay um these are my top five thousand favorite songs <laughs> okay, old, old Time Ways is a manifesto to just deal with it. We're not going back. Yeah. Can I play a few seconds of it? Sure. Okay, I, I mean, you know, 
I'm testing out, speaking of tone, I'm going to do a little product placement. I'm testing out my new Marshall Bluetooth speaker. I told Pat that I wanted to hate this thing, thinking it was kind of hokey, but I bought one of these Bluetooth speakers. And speaking of amps and tone, I think it sounds pretty good. And I want to play a a few seconds of Old Time Ways um, to see how it sounds like. I haven't played it in here. I want to see what it sounds like. He's a very good singer. He, and it's a song about... That is well, very much the, the Dan Electro amplifier on that Yes, song. I can't wait it's to talk to you about it. It's, um, it's a manifesto about we're not going back and you better just deal with it. I like the approach. Uh, I also like the song Get Along. I, I, I like to call these kind of songs fight songs. Meaning, you know, like a fight song, like a cheerleading song. Yeah. Get Along. Like, Get Along. There's definitely some sis boom ba to it. That's... Get along, people. Rah. Get along, big picture. Rah. Get along, small picture. I love that yeah. one. And here's the one after my heart because I love this expression. I, you know, I love to share my opinions. Um, so most mm-hmm. of the time, I like to remember and go back and see. I told you so. And I like to call them victory laps. <laughs> <laughs> so there's well. a song on here after my own heart. Well, called victory you. lap and it is i i like to say things like if you do a five minute song it better be a good five minutes and this one is too short <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna play it i'm gonna implore the listener <clears throat> go listen to it any way you want to and then sh- send venmo <laughs> pat some money <laughs> it, this is a great record ancient noise and it came did you do it on cd please tell me you did um we I don't, did, did you we, do ancient noise on cd i feel like we had to print some up for radio but i don't i don't think so i don't think i, I don't think it, it wow. ever it, was, it might have been the first I, one that I hadn't love been this on record CD. but it's now that cd the sort of like you know it's sort of like kind of crept up as another you know, thing yeah. we thought it was really like CDs went like went so down, yeah. like and it takes so long to sell them. You know, at least I to have. my fan base. But they we still kept some of them in in there, but it's just sort of filtered out. We haven't reprinted them on there. But I guess that might be it might be time for the spring the spring hey, CD it's, reissue. It thinks, it thinks if they if they're gonna re- reboot the cassette, they're rebooting the cassette right now, Pat. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if they, if I don't they think reboot, it's, gonna, it's not gonna. If, I have not, a wall of CDs up there. You've been to my house before. Yeah, there's. And, it's what's behind here. That's, that's. Do you have a bunch of there's, CDs? There's a big old shelf filled with CDs. Yeah, because they, we're you're younger than me. I don't know how much. We're not going to start dropping our age. Or, but you bought a lot of music that way. I bought all this almost thing where, all of I, it. I do nothing but vinyl, and I'm like, except for 20 years, you couldn't buy anything on vinyl. So stop talking. Yeah. I was buying I music the, the whole time. I backfilled and I got my Patrick vinyl Sweeney collection CDs too. from what I learned from buying CDs. Because, yeah, there was, you know, I had some records right there, that thing. But, I mean, God, that I'm thing, holding how many up of those for, we sold off the bandstand? That's if you're not the seeing the have, video, you know, I'm holding up one of Patrick's CDs. Every hour is a dollar gone. It's a beautiful CD. Thank you, Patrick. Well, thank but, you. But, yeah, CDs. CDs. Um, All right. Well, so ancient noted. noise, I love it, and now we're going to talk about the gear, okay? Okay. Because I, uh, I went to go see what all press is out there. You're my friend, you know. We run into each other and play. Hey man, what's mm-hmm. up? But I had to go see what was up in the presses, and I found this premier guitar story on Patrick Sweeney from late um, 2022. And mm-hmm. the guy wants to talk to Sweeney about his amps. And I was like, oh, boy. Um, I, as long as I've been down this rabbit hole with Dan Letro, people like amps, amps. I'm like, don't talk to me about amps. I don't want to go. I don't want to get started. I'll start wanting to buy one of those. You know, it's like almost scared to go there. But I read this article on you, and I was like, okay, I want I to know about. I could lend you a really cool little 
All right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I, I know it's a, it's a just, slippery slope. I'm surrounded but by all my crap, and I can see it's it's literally at eye level. <laughs> the thing. Is it a little baby Dan Letro? It is. Uh, yes. I read this story on Patrick and his amps, and I really, probably for the first time, fully understood amplifiers as gear talk discussion. Now, do I know how they sound and everything else, but the way you articulated it. And the reason why it was interesting to me, this was a great piece. And you told me the gentleman who wrote this piece is local. What his name yeah, is Ted again? Ted Rosowski. He's yeah. Really, yeah he's... I, don't, I haven't met him, but this is a great uh, article. You definitely stood next to him at gigs. Like yeah, I, I, I think you'll, I... You'll know him. You'll be like, oh, you're that guy. Yeah, like, he's... Yeah, he's around. Good guitar player. I'm you still know, meeting plays. people all the time yeah. in this town. But I mean, it's, he's been around like old family wash to new family wash to East Side Bowl, like that that hang, that scene. Yeah. Oh, and I've been around a long time, but I don't think I've met him. He yeah. he talks about something in the beginning of the article. He says delivering dirty brujo b r u j o brujo. What does that mean? Delivering dirty brujo tone is not simple. What is he talking about? B R U J O. Spell the word again. <laughs> B R U J O. Brujo, Brujo. Brujo. I yeah, guess like that. Mean? I guess. I don't know. I, I, I forgot. Okay, I, we'll know, learn like, together. We'll learn together. Yeah, like there. I mean, I would, learning, I would assume it means, you know. It, I'm learning the beefy, vernacular. but, you know, like, you know. Well, I hey, don't know. Next time we're all in a room together, introduce me to the guy and say, I please explain will. to Emily what the hell Brujo tone is. I yeah. love the, the name of this article is how uh, how Patrick Sweeney beats the devil. And I was like, way to go. But <laughs> he wants to talk to you about your amplifiers. And it's I found weird this. Because I firmly align myself with the forces of darkness and heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, um, he, Who knew? This is, a, this is a great. Big time uh, Slayer fan. No, but Can't you stress. know. Listen, um, blues and gospel, close and common. You know mm -hmm. it, the truth. It's a, it's a type of religion, am I right? So It, it, uh, it is. So he, it's a great article on your amps, and I, I found it fascinating. And, and then I saw that Dan Electro. I saw it. I was like, Dan Electro? Uh, and, and it says, um, the guy says, but enough about Patrick. This is an amp column. And the guy says, I showed up at a, a recent Tiger Beat show, and he wants to talk to you about your amps. Um, and you start using this, you, you said, um, a 15-inch speaker with an Alnico, a word I've learned to pronounce just recently. <laughs> Mag you said it wrong Ma is, is that not decades. How, you, how, yeah, uh, how do you say it? I found out a couple years ago I was saying how, it wrong. How do you say it? How do you it's say Alnico it? Alnico is Alnico, how. Alnico, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, Rob, my Alnico. cohort, Robert. Alnico. Was, Al Nico. I thought so too. Like See, that. I told you, Ohio, Mississippi, yeah. we're both yeah. Hicks. You're from up there, and I'm from down there. Yeah. Al Nico. I just learned how to pronounce it. Anyway, you talk about it, and then um, you talk about how this you you have a, a recently acquired uh, Dan Electro. Hold on, let me find the that's that uh, that you describe as crystallizing your uh, it's a signature sound that has crystallized when I'm sorry for the inarticulation. No, no problem. He, you said you were trying to find your sound and then it crystallized when you got that Dan Electro amp. And that's yeah. when I decided I want to go think about this, not just the guitar, but about the amp too, because you're saying Patrick Sweeney, master of tone. I've seen it. You're talking about your sound and it's both. It's the amp. And I want you to tell me a little bit about that amp, but save a little time because I got a publicity stunt. You know what I'm going to make you do? Oh, you do it. I'll, I'll, I'll get, do the broad Tell strokes me about like this that. amp. Tell me about this amp. Well, this amp, I mean, I have, I've always had, I've been really lucky to have a lot of cool amps and access to a lot of cool amps uh, of a lot of different stripes. But like of the tube amplifiers, they tend to be lower wattage, uh, you know, usually nothing more than, you know, 20 watts or so. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and they seem to have the, the tones, you know, off the old blues records that I'm looking for. Uh, this one walked into my house probably 10 years ago from a friend, 
uh, from Norton Guitar Works, Taylor Belling of Buffalo, New York, uh, where um, shout out. He's like, this is the one I, you know, and he said I never should have sold it, but um, uh, it's a Dan Electro Explorer, so it's a uh, it's made by the Valco Company, which made uh, the amp and case for all the Dan Electro amps. It was it's branded Dan Electro, but they branded for. Uh, for Airline, for Harmony, for Dan Electro, oh, for Silvertone, true. for Montgomery Ward. Uh, what was the the Sears brand? It just, um, just left me. Silvertone? Or uh, the, I guess I did say Silvertone. Yeah, yeah so, so because they made so amps all those, too. So, so, yeah. all, so all those, all of them, very beautiful, you know, efficient, serviceable, uh, just to, just from a just from a working uh, type man like my like the guy uh, Kyle Wearsba that that works on all my amplifiers he loves this amplifier so much it's so over engineered um, it has these shock mounts it, built it into it does that appeal to the over when you say over engineered it just appeals to the nerd the over engineering well it does but it makes it all sort of an earmark of like. Uh, it's it's before the, sort of the planned obsolescence trend in manufacturing. Got you. I know yeah. what that means. Planned obsolescence. I sold right. electrolux vacuum cleaners. Right. to be a little cleaners. disposable and sort of this is you know pre Beatlemania, pre yeah. you know like you know sort of the, the end of ostensible so that is, it would be built to last. This from about 1960. Last. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. It's you know it's got four inputs: one for a microphone, one for a you know something that was more popular, like an accordion or something like that, or a uh, Expansion then, possibilities. Yeah, exactly. Where yeah. Like, you know, the whole band might be playing with fifteen inch speaker, obviously, you know, to put out, you know, a little more sound in the room. Mm. Um it doesn't have reverb, it's you know, kind of pre, you know, onboard reverb mm -hmm. of amps, at least doing a uh the cabinet though is made out of really, really cheap material. It was whatever, you know, just sort of you know, do you think it could be Masonite plywood. too? So I've had to do a little bit of repair on the bottom of it, where it seems like, yeah. um, uh, like that. But the cabinet does, does it look it does like something a, like particle board? And it, it's exactly that, yeah. So, but there's something about that sound. Yeah, also, okay. the way that they it have could this be Masonite or its equivalent. Yeah, very much so. Very thick. I don't know if uh, is it still Masonite when it's. Yeah. I've never seen Masonite like un. Yeah, yeah, it could be finished. A, that, it, that's only a brand, you know, it's a composite. So, oh, okay. But I like bet Kleenex. that's helpful to you, it being light. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Masonite was a name brand, but then mm -hmm. they, MDF, they call it MDF in, um, in England. It stands for oh, me okay. medium density fiber board. And actually it oh. started. Well, then in that's Eng definitely this. Yeah. It started, it was, it, it was a process. And it was an English process. Your parents are, were English. They, my mom, yeah, my mom's British, born in yeah. Liverpool, England. Um, it started in England and it was, a, it, I believe about 1900 and then, or late, it, the, it was a new process, mid century. And it was, yeah. you don't have to use wood for this. We can use MDF and it's a particle board. Masonite incorporated it in Laurel, Mississippi, and it's the became the predominant name brand. But a lot of people make these things, and there's different weights too. So what you've got there is just for the same reasons that your guitar is light and all that other stuff. It's the same thing. Well, that's it. Great. May not be Masonite, and I do, it's the amp guys are going to flame me and go. She's saying, I no, only, it, I'm saying if it I looks would, like particle board, it's some kind of composite, is what well, it yes, is. Yes, it definitely yeah. is. So it's that. light. It's a lot it's, lighter. It's, it's fairly light, so you know it's easier out. It's a narrow cabinet, you know, because mm -hmm. of the strength of the, you know, at least in the beginning, the strength of it before it starts to deteriorate. But also this chassis, this it's it's work so it folds out so you can uh like my uh, the guy that works on my stuff, my tech uh Kyle, it folds out to almost its own workbench so that you can keep it powered up and use your test testing uh gears to you know to bias things or to you know or to to see if there's you know a short or something in there that you can keep it plugged in and keep power going you know to it and Excellent. still be able to work on it and see it it's really like i said very much over engineered, over -engineered. so it could be serviced by the consumer yeah you know with a little bit of you know obviously we you know we yeah. moved way beyond you know that that ended about that time period of like you know or like a car that, you know, an amateur could work on or something like that. Very much in that same 
yeah. mindset. Well, I'm going to buy this one, you know, and make. We just, built this one to last. Work on it, and now, you know? There's yeah. no amp shops in sweatshirt Iowa. You know, there's like you got to go to the library, look it up in the encyclopedia. You know, wait if for them. They're cost you know. prohibitive. Uh, one thing I'll say that you know about me, which is absolutely true. This is the kind of lore that pe- I'll tell people and they won't believe me, but I sold vacuum cleaners door to door. And one reason why I love Patrick is he had an incredible video. What song was that? Them shoes working or, for you, wor- wor- working, working for, for you. you off of close. He's to the got floor. a video on YouTube. Go check it out. His video for working for you is fabulous. And I love the analogy. And I told you when you came out with it, I said, I actually did that for seven years. Wow. This is a true story. I'm going to break this out. My buddy, about- Terry Rickards, that books Browns. That was, I got the idea from him because he, you know, he was my neighbor. And we're pals, and he was a uh, uh, the same. Well, what's what's the cup? Uh, well, we don't have to mention up, but he did the same thing. Yeah, it's for years I, in but rural I, but Pennsylvania. I, yeah, and most people did. There's a lot of people who did that, but I actually did it, and I was very good at it. And then I went into management, and I mean, I I, I was doing pretty good. Okay, and that's, that's why I did was doing well for myself in Atlanta because I owned a I, I owned a duplex in Little Five Points. And I was first person of all my friends um, to buy a house, and they all had fancy schooling, and I had a modest state degree, and I took a job selling vacuum cleaners. I made more money than any of them. <laughs> Hate to say it, but here's my Man. fifty sale pin. I pulled this out. Yeah, this is when you. This is it was. Um, I I used. I was awarded a lot of jewelry over the years. It was one of those old school direct sales. It's not a sentence you hear a lot. Huh. I was awarded a lot of jewelry over the I years. I was awarded. It was one of those old-fashioned direct selling companies, just like Mary Kay. Mary Kay is multi-level mm. marketing. Electrolux was not multi-level marketing, but it was direct selling. And they gave me trips all over, and I won all kinds of jewelry. And um, a, a lot of it was big, heavy gold stuff. And when gold got really high a few years ago, I went and took it up to minor jewelry and sold it all for a bunch of money. But I kept this one. It's a sterling silver, and it's a 50 sale pin. And you, I'm just going to tell you, I really did sell vacuum cleaners for a living. I didn't mean to get into about me, but we told people I sold Electroluxes and they were made in Bristol, Virginia. And we told people, these are not planned obsolescence. These are vacuum cleaners that will last you a lifetime and you can repair them infinitely. And this is a true story. I still have the same one. They, the first one they gave me, and that is what we vacuum our house with. Oh, that's great. Viva Electrolux. But it's the same thing, planned obsolescence. There was a pride in, um, you know, some American companies that you would build things to last. Look at it. It's all steel. It's sort of the machine age. And that, that amp that you're talking about, is, is that's what that's about. It's about building something with a pride that this is timeless. And the stuff that you told me about the, 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 the way it's sort of expandable and you could do these different things with it, that's just genius. It is. I mean, I mean absolute really. Absolute I mean, genius. Absolutely meant though for the professional as well. You know, yeah. that's that's the thing of the, someone who is, you know, working in in you know, in the, the the thing, putting one, putting it in and out of like just having the way it's shock mounted, so they know people. Someone's going to be moving it around. It's not just a piece of furniture that sits in your living room or in your your kid's room for him to practice. You know, little black egg on. It's, it's not a, a toy. A, yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's a real thing. You know, it's, so that's. It's, it's, let me. Are you going to show me what? Tell me. Show me what you're, you just strapped your guitar on for those not seeing. Are you going to yes. let me listen to a little bit? Talk to me. Of Talk the, to me of, about of that Dan guy. Electro well, I, amp. I used it on the Saturday gig, and then I used it on my Monday gig, and uh, one of the power tubes <laughs> failed. So it is currently, I have it here for, for display only. Far. It is, it does sound, uh, it is an amazing sounding amp, and it literally, I, I tried all, all morning. <laughs> to see if I could oh, juice. that's okay. But I that's could swap part... it out. But there's something. It's kind of yeah. Yeah. But it. But, uh, uh, um. Well, you say it says in the article that you know this is a this is a treasured amp for you right now, and you don't just drag it anywhere. And see, there you went. And went show. Is it my fault? I told you I was going to no, come see all. you Saturday I night, on, I mean, and I said I want to see that Dan Electro amp. It's it's because I have too much stuff to cycle through. Yeah, like that, and things fall. Like they, if you don't run voltage through them all the time, they, you know, they don't like they're like so. 
but also this amp too is one I've like I've always been on, and that's another thing about the tone. I love as amps age and like they're you know they're sort of organic things like you know capacitors tend to leak a little voltage things like that, and that affects tone. So that really pleasing, like ah, I wish I you know, like like really pleasing distorted sound on something like uh, you know some of the early Howlin' Wolf records or things like that of. Uh, this gets it like this amp just sounds like the coolest guitar in 1950 yeah. you know of just like it sounds like a gatemouth brown record or an early bb king record or something like that it's got this certain vibe the way the preamp reacts to the you know the power amp and and the way that reacts to the speaker has a sort of squash thing so i haven't when i have uh my you know when something goes wrong with this and very little does uh, but, you know, you burn through tubes, you burn yeah. through things like that, yeah. or, or, you know, in capacitors, they just, over time, Just like a guitar, it needs to be main maintained. Yeah, I mean, yeah. simple maintenance. Yeah. But I've, I've been like, pull as little as possible. Like, he's like, well, you know, if this one's going, the next one's probably going. I'm like, well, let's just wait until that one goes. Yeah. You know, instead well, of, whereas a normal, like, my, like, touring amps and things like that, I would be like, you know, hey, or, or like, it's like the van. Hey, we've got the hood open. Let's, you know, yeah. let's tune it up. Let's yeah. do this regular, you know, because it has to be. This thing is a little more special because it's not like a gigging, gigging amp. I mean, I'll take it around town if it's, yeah. it's there, but I really have sort of neglected it. And I, it's probably, probably just got a cap or something like that or, or a power tube. But yeah. I, so. Well, I got to hear it um, Saturday night and it They sounded... always sound great right before they die. <laughs> they always sound best. All, that's, that is a, undeniable truth every electric guitar player will tell you right before your amp dies i'm looking down and, and at also, this article it right better, now and it says it's a quirky that it that it implodes like this thing it just you know it just sort of you know just didn't sound as loud then it just kept getting quieter and quieter just you as know. you were saying that, I looked down and it says, unlike some earlier explorers, this model has its tubes and transformers on display and clays in cage enclosed by a cage. And um, it's described as um, quirky, um, that it can be quirky, uh, quirky beast. It, it can, it can is, be. Is described. It took a while to quirky find a guy beast. that want to work on it, you know, to be like, yeah, hey, you know. <laughs> Like, because, you know, it's not a, a standard thing, you know, and I don't want somebody to gut it and just sort of put, like, you know, their version of a Fender set. But so, you know, you have to be, I, you have to find the right nerd, and, and I have that nerd in yes. Kyle Wiersma. Once. <laughs> That's right. the nice thing about Nashville. It just brings in the nerds. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they're, they're here. Piano tuners. Oh, my, so, I mean, uh, like, piano tuners are something else. Like I've those met guys. A few. Just the amount okay. of attention. I told, oh, I promised you when we started, I was going to try to keep this to an hour, but I, I told you it's a discipline because when I get somebody like you, I see you all the time in a lot of ways, but we don't have that much time to talk. You know, we don't have that much time to talk right. and I, I could sit here all day long and chat with you, but we know that in its roots, I wanted you to be my uh, sympathetic string because we have a publicity stunt. And that is for you to take out the guitar that I made you take from me. Go get it, Sweeney. Thanks. I'm tired of all this telly talk. All this telly talk. <laughs> get you on the old telly talk podcast for that, pal. But, so uh, I've been wanting to put this in your hands because you are very astute about uh, blues, but also about funk and proto funk, which I'm. I, I use this expression proto funk, and it, you know what I'm talking about. That's a magical area where it's moving from one thing to another, and I'm disco I'm discovering this instrument all over a lot of brilliant shit. I told you about some of the stuff that I've been finding with it, and um, I told you I said I gotta lend this thing to you, man. I want to see what you do with it. <laughs> Just tell me to do that. Like it, here, there's and what so do we call we can, those? Uh, and what do we call those? Those are the sympathetic strings. So there is a lipstick tube pickup under these strings at the body, and there's a plastic guard for your armrest that you don't, yeah. Yeah, don't so brush you don't, them or put, yeah. put tension on them. But uh, as I turn it off again, all the knobs, all the. And then that pickup as we put it through the amplifier. <sighs> these so never crazy. really 
plucked except yeah. for like some effect or something like that or like the you know there's the a few handful of, of artists song. that have used them for intros yeah. and things just quick things just like you would have done some harp strings or some sitar mm -hmm. strings and steve miller's one of them oh cool yeah um you know he uses both and my friend that i told you about up in new york that you that you that uses this instrument a lot in supporting artists um, he uses the harp strings. He does some weird stuff where he loops things on the six strings and then does Whoa. some other thing. It, really, really cool stuff. So I love you. Appreciate it. Give me another spooky strum of those sympathetic strings. Oh, Give these? Me, yeah. It sounds like the, the perfect moment in a, a horror movie. <laughs> spooky. Right. Like there. But it's kind of harpy. It's harpy. Yeah, I, it's, I, I, I'm not even, I'm, I'll be honest, I haven't done the research of what they're supposed to be exactly tuned to. It's very sad. But they're in really fiction. close intervals, too, so they all sort of resonate when you play the other. So cool, and then with uh, I'm sorry. you just played you just played the 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 red bone riff. You just played the red bone riff, didn't you? Didn't you just play the red bone riff? Yes, I did. Do it to do it again for me, man. All right. Hey, what's the matter with? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry I mean, to interrupt. I unbelievable, to, I... but what a small part. That's the thing that's fascinating about this thing, which I didn't really know. Like, like, like you sent me your, you know, uh, your playlist, which yeah. is just overwhelming. Just but then list. I'm also like, uh, what's is it the? I don't remember if it's the Delphonics, Blue Magic, or the Shy Lights. But uh, didn't I blow your mind this time? The Delphonics. Time? That's Delphonics. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But um, the Redbone, the thing is, they were they were known for that song. But all they were a great band, by the way. I don't know how oh, much yeah. you know about Redbone, but mm -hmm. this has been a less a less a listening exercise, and that's why I'm so excited about it. For the last three and a half years, I've gone to listen to the whole record because I know it's never an isolated incident. They, people always say it's on Steely Dan's "Do It Again." It's on all this other stuff. Go listen for it, and you'll really learn how to listen to music. So I had to go listen to – have you ever listened to all of Redbone's music? I have not. I don't know anyone that has except maybe you. I have, now. and it was a blast. And it was – they used it on that work record on nearly on every track. But I, I, you, when you see them videos of them performing live, you'll never see it. It was a studio trick, just like with Steely Dan. But it's all over the Redbone, not just that song. And that was a very interesting band. So sorry to cut off your performance. Thank you for oh, no, not I mean, thank you for have. showing what the cool riff yeah. of that is. Because go listen to the whole record and you'll hear it all over it. So what else you got for me? That's cool. Well, I mean, like I was trying to remember, like like those sort of like those kind of like double thoughts. Like I mean, they didn't use one on Rainy Night in Georgia, but that was, but these things that you can it. It just adds so much color to a very small part, but it's just the, the way that it sits in a mix, you know, because it's not a huge sound. Like even you know at like at, at its loud, like if you were playing like a, you know, it's still kind of tiny. Mm -hmm. As opposed, to if I was playing that, like you know, mm -hmm. uh, on you know, like that telecast, something it's like about that. Those it's, you know, low I'm playing power out chords. It has yeah. this girth to it and things like yeah. this. And this is so much, you know, low like output a, pickups, low output. Right. right? But also just the tonality just, of it. Yeah. Of this thing of like, it doesn't resonate on the bass end. It's, it's yeah. this, this, the, like more like. Dan Baird made the exact same, uh, uh, a call that you did. He, you know, he yeah. was describing it, how it can mix into that because it's thin and it, you can put it in there. And that's why it's such an interesting thing to mix in there mm -hmm. is, is it, and I, I'm understanding as a layman, this big, thin, fat, you know, um, as music production. And, uh, he said the exact same thing. Okay. You just yeah. played a little bit of paint it black. Yeah. Like that. And it's just this little two note. <laughs> Yeah. 
you know, and like you play that on a normal electric guitar, it just sounds like nothing. Yeah. But it's, you know. So they're also, you know, like it's all something about that. You can also hear they're not just playing this riff on it. So they're doing like, like I listen to that record again and they're doing these sort of like big chords of like. Mm-hmm. I like them. I wish I could remember. I can't remember the the, the, the first note of uh, the Yardbird. Still, I'm sad. Mm-hmm. Like, have you ever have you ever heard of that song? I'm trying to recall. I know I've heard it, but I'm trying Still to recall it. Still, I'm sad. <laughs> Total, like you know, I'll like have to the, go like listen the, to like that. The, 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 the it's it's really. I mean, it's you know they had a hit and they were trying to like oh everyone's writing songs you know and. Yeah. You know, Jeff are you Max, a Stevie Wonder? Up, you know, and what's that? Are you a Steve, Are you a Stevie Wonder guy? Oh, I love Stevie Wonder. Yeah, yeah. Um, like because that. he, you know, the, do you mm-hmm. know how to do the intro mm-hmm. to Sound Seal Delivered? It seemed like oh, every. Oh yeah, I'm trying to think what he is. <laughs> You're almost there. Uh, Yeah, I don't, oh. I, don't, I don't, don't remember it. That, one's in, is, is it, uh. that sounds, it's amazing how much you can make that sound like a conventional guitar, too. I, I got to, I'll have to hear it like there, but like, but it's just that. I mean, like, I don't know that song, but I can kind of play the melody and it's this. Yeah. You know, and then, of course, you know, the most maybe talented living person at the time starts singing, you know, that, that really kind of, kind of another supernatural well. person, another yeah, supernatural I mean, person that somehow, maybe you know, human. we we're losing <laughs> heroes and giants every day. And every time it happens, I go, somebody check on share, somebody check yeah. on <laughs> Stevie wonder, you know, <laughs> Mm-hmm. He was a king. Anything else you? I promise I, I wouldn't take you too long. Anything else you want to show me on that before I let you Man, go? But there's so many but I'm things. I'm gonna have you back on. I want like, you to become my blues authority. Like you can even like play like kind of like a John Lee Hooker yeah. kind of thing on it. Do it. Do it. John Lee Hooker kind of set up his, like, in some of that early stuff, set his guitar. Like, his guitar kind of sounds like that. He's got the action set really low. You know, the, the you know it's really kind of vibrating against the frets. Oh, you know, like... Whoa, mama don't allow me Lord, to stay out all night long like that kind of thing, like it works so well. What's what's the what's the canned heat thing? You know, uh, oh, I know. Um, uh, I'm so tired of crying. I'm out on the road again. I don't even know how they like. Uh, yeah, where do like, we? Where does Patrick Stan, uh, Sweeney stand on Robert Cray? Are you a fan? Love Robert. Are I you kidding do. Me? Too. He's, I mean, a another limitlessly singer. talented. Singer. Violently underappreciated artist. Underappreciated. Thank you for the right word. It's not underrated. He's a very successful. Uh, yeah. And a pop star, if you will. I mean, he's a freaking pop yeah. star. But he can sing. He's such a great singer. And he ha- he writes amazing yeah. songs. And he used uh, the electric sitar on one record. Um, it's on one song in particular called uh, Up in the Sky. And it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, Buddy Guy has a history with a Jerry James. Yeah. Uh, did you yeah, know that? It, uh, it feels like rain. Is that what is that the one that's uh, on? It's he's skin, used no, it on a handful deep. of he's skin, skin deep. deep is the one he plays. Which he I plays think it was live a... every time I've seen him. He's he's played it. Yeah, when when yeah. I first started this whole uh, exotic odyssey, when I got obsessed with these things, I had a guy from Dayton, Ohio. He's one of my cheerleaders, you know, handing me information. And uh, he said, the first time I ever saw a buddy guy at a blues festival, he was playing one of those. And I was like, wait a second. And then I go Google it, and that was a real big hit for him crossover you know oh, absolutely. Uh, skin deep maybe and, his biggest modern song 
And it's all over. It's a signature part of the sound. And he bought mm-hmm. that sitar. He has a Jerry Jones one. He never had a coral one. He's always yeah. keeping it fresh. Buddy Guy bought it here in Nashville because he ran into one in a guitar shop. And he said, I yeah. want one of those. And it was a Jerry Jones. So it's the one that you're playing, not a coral. Wow. And that, that's what that's he plays. So cool. And um, he's got one. He's got one song on his last record. He does a version of um, the a Beatles song. Um, I've got a feeling, and it kicks ass, man. And the intro, he's he's using the electric sitar, and it's him doing "I've Got a Feeling." Buddy Guy, I love him. Been around for decades. I, keeps yeah, it man. moving. A classic guy who keeps it moving. Hmm. I love him. All I right. Know, I love Buddy Guy. One more blues riff, and then I promise. I, I kept you 25 minutes over what I promised, but oh, I couldn't that's help right. myself. Like a, like a, that's trying to feel like, like. I mean, there's just so much to do with it, of like that, of like. chords on it. Of like doing, or like a Bobby Womack kind of like rhythm thing, you know, like... Mm -hmm. It's just so, it's such a strange, it's so different than the guitar as like from, especially for me, like, you know, for to play, cause I'm, I'm a fingerstyle guitar player. So I'm always dragging a bass note and yeah. you'll never, you really don't like this thing. Isn't, it isn't made for down there. Yeah. Like it doesn't really sitar out until you get it. Sitar out. Pitch. I love it. We've yeah. got a new expression. <laughs> Around like B flat C, then you know you're up in C there. Uh, That's on the funky side. Yeah. It links itself to funk. It's funky. It's funky. Yeah, I mean, like I, it's very funky. It's nothing but funky. That's also it. You know, yeah. Like, you just gravitate to where you're. You know. Lightning Hopkins sounds, you know, like some other worldly thing. But it doesn't sound wrong. No. That's the thing is like you could hear somebody sing over like like even you know without a, a you know another rhythm backing it. So, it's a it's it's a weird one. It's it's so strange and then again so in, like invisibly present. Like Patrick, you delivered on all my expectations <laughs> when I conscripted Aim low, you. And you'll never be disappointed. No, I was just like, you, you know, there's, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I know a few guitar players around here, just so you know. But I, I was like, I want to I know what Patrick Sweeney thinks about this thing. And you were game, and I appreciate it. Um, do you want one now? You, you're I you're not really one of guy. You're, you're not a guy with a bunch of guitars, and I like that about you. Or I guess are you're you not. serious? Do you how many guitars do you have? Oh my god! I know, but you're not one of like, those show like off people. In all, in you're not all one locations, of those show off people. All locations. How many guitars? All locations. Do you have? I'm sure. Seventy. <sighs> don't <laughs> buy it. Hey, there is, me- like, like I, we never sell. We do not sell. Oh. Sweeties do not sell. We only acquire. I kind of like, like that. I've only I, ever sold. I've sold one guitar in my entire lifetime, oh. and used that to directly go several feet away and buy two guitars. Ooh, <laughs> I I bet I would love to know all about your. We're gonna have you back. Yeah, we're gonna have you back. You're gonna become my consultant. I mean, just I, I can touch. 14 guitars where I'm okay. sitting right here right now. I am a, I am 
nearly being crushed by the weight of my I didn't know that <laughs> about orderism. you. I didn't know that. But I love finding oh, it out. Horrible. Well, you may want to get a sitar, but you don't have to because you can have mine any damn time you want. Yeah. That doesn't make uh, any difference But to because me, that's lady. what I discovered Makes when no, I... No, that's not... A, I could get you know, anything I want. I know, but... But you know, I want that to One own. thing I discovered about finding that... <laughs> yeah. uh, that gear on records, it's always borrowed. It's rarely owned by somebody. Oh. And it's always borrowed. That's why I was like, I want to lend this guitar. I want to lend this guitar out to people. And I, you delivered on my promise. Number one, folks, I want to tell you people, I chose Patrick Sweeney because he's one of my favorite people here in Nashville. He's no BS. He's no BS. He's a pro, which meant I could count on him. We had we tried to do this talk last week, but we had a technical difficulty, and he, he could have just been like, "I don't want to do the this. technology." He, he helped me. He, he we tested the mic. We wanted to make sure it sounded okay on our primitive thing, and he helped me with all that. And the whole time I've been saying, "Patrick Sweeney, thank you for delivering and being a pro and caring about how it looks and sounds, and even caring about talking to me." Of course. And being a sympathetic string. But you uh, totally delivered on everything I expected when I uh, lent this to you. And I told you it was a Nashville publicity stunt. The lipstick it pickup. Sure is. <laughs> Lynn's Patrick Sweeney, her electric sitar. But you nailed it. And uh, that's why we ran 30 minutes over. But I couldn't help myself. And I might decide work. to make this shorter, except for every second I enjoyed. I don't want to take any of yeah. it out. Nah, it's, it's you know that's this is it like as 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 you become a con as you are now a content creator you are going to have to edit more than you think you have to i need to learn how to edit myself that's, is what I mean. the, that's the hill to climb i think I, it was an hour and 30 minutes of, of king solomon <laughs> <laughs> that'll solve yeah. something um, I think I would be it would be like choosing a baby uh, because well, yeah. I loved that's, every hour and the 31, Solomon analogy. Like, I loved every hour and thirty one minutes that I spent with you. Well, um, likewise, I am going to cut you loose. Okay. Um, when I when I hit stop record, stay for one second because I want to thank I sure you. Sure will. Personally, I else to I'm going to break out. You know, <laughs> I'm going to blow some smoke up your ass and tell you what a great job you did. Well, but for now, I'll, we're off the record. I'm stopping. Thank you for being my sympathetic string today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If you hear excellent tone and the sound of birds chirping, it means time flew and you made it through an entire episode of the Lipstick Pickup Podcast. Robert and I would like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sharing your time with us, and we hope you'll do it again soon. We have nothing to pitch or corporate sponsors to recognize, but we'd love your comments, questions, requests, or likes. Please subscribe or follow us in any forum in which you might have discovered us, or reach out through email, robert at thelipstickpickup.com or emily at thelipstickpickup.com. We'd love to hear from you.